Welcome back to Maths with Armin. Uh, in this short video, uh, I want to present the solutions to the video on trigonometric functions, and that is the worksheet uh, exercises at the end of the video. Okay. Uh, I would like you to not forget to subscribe to my channel, Maths with Armin, so you can get the latest updates. This exercise worksheet consists of five questions. Uh, these are questions I've taken from the Department of Basic Education uh, question papers and I made some slight adaptations by adding a few questions and doing a little bit of editing. Uh, this was uh, the uh, unit 6 uh, of uh, the related video. Uh, this first question as you can see it's adapted from November 2014 and we'll go through each of the questions uh, in the next few slides. Now let's look at the first question there. We need to determine the range of the F. And as you can see, the range there is from 0 to 2. Next, we want to draw the graph. And here you can, as I did in the video, I showed you how you can use your calculator to set up a table using table mode. And cos of 2x, and if we do that, that is the graph for cos of 2x. There. So that is the G graph that we have there. Let's go to the next question. Now we want to determine the general solution. So we start off there. The cos of 2x is an identity. And because we have sine, we choose the one, 1 minus 2 sine squared x. Right? We transpose everything to the left side and simplify. And then here we want to get a zero product. So we get the factors. And sine of x is 0. And sine is 0 at 0 and 180. We want the general solution, so we add k times the period, k times the period. And don't forget to indicate what the k stands for. k is the element of the integers. Then we take sine of x is equal to a, e to negative a half. We get the reference angle 30. Don't use the negative to get the reference angle. Sine is negative in the third quadrant, or sine is negative in the fourth. Third quadrant is 180 plus 30, which is 210. Fourth quadrant is 360 minus 30, which is 330, and there we have the general solution. Now let's uh, look at this question. There we have both graphs for easy reference. Determine the periods. Now we want a new a period of a new function h, and you can see h is related. It's in terms of the g, and we can look at the period for the g. The period for the G is, there you can see it's 180. You know, any piece there, it's 180. So because I have 2x, I have to take 180 divided by 2, and that gives me 90 degrees. Okay. Determine the values of x. Now we have to look at the values between 0 and 270. So we don't want to look here, right? We only focus on the positive uh, side of the x-axis. Uh, we'll need the point of intersection that we can get from our, um, our general solution. And we see there's the point there it intersects, there it intersects. So there's, those are the intersection points that we will need, right, based on the previous question. Now the first question here, uh, fx must be less, or fx needs to be below the g. And if we follow where the f is below, we see there the f is above then the f is below, there between those two intersection points. Then the f is above. So the below part is between, as you can see, between 180 and what's that uh, point of intersection? 210. So it's between 180 and 210. Then here we want to get the product of the, the fx and gx, and that must be greater or equal to 0. So I need to see where is the product greater or equal to zero. That's a positive times a positive. So that will give me a positive product. This is a positive with a negative. That won't. Then again, I have a positive with a positive, And then I have a, you see this whole piece here? I have a positive up to there. So that's going to be positive with positive there. Okay, so let's see. So it's that piece there, you can see there, that's positive times positive. Then between this point and this point, it's going to be a positive with a negative. And between 135 and 225, that's another positive times a positive. Right? And there we have the 
solutions there. Note this is uh, uh, greater as well as equal, so you have to use the square bracket notation there. Just be careful of your notation. Now let's consider the second question, which is an adapted uh, question from the June 2015 paper. Now let's look at the questions there. There is the given graph, and we have a domain from negative 90 to 90. We want to determine the numerical value of A and B. Now if I look at A, A is part of the F, A, X, so that will I need to know the period of the F. If I look at the F curve there, you can see there is the period. And the, what, how big is that? 120. So the A value would be the default 360 divided by 120 is 3. So A is equal to 3. The B value here, that's the amplitude, right? And if I look at this curve here, this is actually the reflection of the cosine, so it's a negative cos curve, right? So this must be negative, but the amplitude there is 1, so I need to write down negative 1, right? Remember, if, if you have a negative uh, uh, cos x, the amplitude is not negative, but positive, right? But this is a negative, so b has to be a negative value. Write down the period of g. If I look at the period of G, you see this is just, this is not a full cosine, this is half of it. So in other words, the distance from negative 90 to 90 is 180, so I need to double it. So it's 180 times 2, so the whole complete, if I have up to 360, I'll be able to have the full cosine curve there. So that's 360. You can also see there, that is just X, so that's the default period is 360. 60, but that's how you could reason it out as well. Then we want to find the general solution of the points of intersection. Let's look at that point of intersection. So this one here is somewhere between negative 60 and 30. Okay, so if I calculate 130 and I make k a negative 135, sorry, 135 minus 80 gives me negative 45. So that point is negative 45. The next point of intersection is this one, and if I take 67,5 subtract 90, I get negative 22, so this is negative 22,5. And the other one here, if I take 67,5 and I just add, make k is 0, and then I get 67,5. So there, there's my three points of intersection negative 45 at negative 22,5 and at 67,5. Now let's have our graph back again. Right? Determine the equation of a new function. If you take a function and you want to shift it to the right, that means I have to subtract from the x. So that function there will be x minus 60, and remember b is negative 1, so it's negative cos x minus 60, that's to the right, okay? Now we want to determine values, so let's remember we calculated our turning points, so let's put our turning points back there, from what our previous, so we're going to, we, we will be needing that, because I want to know where is the f graph above as well as on the g graph, where is fx greater or equal, and that is actually above and on, <coughs> So I have to now look at that, and you look at the F graph, you see the F graph there, the, this is the F graph, the F graph is above, up to there, then it is below, then it is above, and then it's below, so it's above between negative 90 and, let's look at that, there's it above, and then it is below again from this point, to the intersection point to that intersection point. Because it's equal to, it has to be on, so that I have to include those endpoints. So I need square brackets here. Okay. The next question, where is the product less than zero? That means negative. So it's a positive with a negative and a negative with a positive. And I look for that. Let's put it up there. I don't want to put it on that one. So you can see between negative 90 and negative 60, the F graph is positive and the G graph is negative, right? Then again here, um, between 0 and 60, the F graph is positive and the G graph is negative there. So that's a positive times a negative, so that is my solution. And because I have, don't have the equal included, so I don't want to know whether the product is equal to 0, I want to know whether it's less than 0, so I have to use the square brackets there. 
This third question comes from February 2017 and also slightly adapted. Here we are given two uh, curves. It's a sine curve and a tangent curve. And the domain is from 0 to 225. Right? Let's put the graph there for easy reference. Determine the numerical values of A and B. Again there. A here will be the, that's correct, will be the amplitude. So I just have to look at the amplitude. And again here, do you notice here? This here is a... It's the negative sine graph. And I see the amplitude is 1. So A has to be negative 1. Okay. Be careful of that. Here this affects the period. Normal period for a tangent is 180. But here you see the period for tangent is 90. So in other words, that B value there will be 180 divided by 90, which is 2. Write down the period of H. Now this is a new function. So I must transform the f, uh, the sine curve, and half of x, so the period of the sine curve, because that's x, it, it will be the default period of 360. So I have to take 360 divided by 0, 0,5, that gives me 720. Determine the maximum value of this new curve, but it's related to the sine curve. So what's the maximum value of the sine curve? The, if I look at the sine curve there, that will be the minimum negative one, and the maximum would be at plus one. So it's the maximum of the f, which is one, and one plus one. I hope you don't use a calculator. That should give you two. Determine the values of x between zero and two two five, where the product is less as well as equal to zero. So this means positive times negative, and negative times positive. And I only want down to look at it here. You can see that's positive with a negative. So that seems to be one of the answers there. Then I have negative times negative, and then I have positive. You just go from that intercept to the asymptote, from that asymptote to the intercept, from the, uh, the x-intercept to the asymptote. You know, you can see the positive with negative. So I've got an answer there, and I've got one here. And this is negative with negative, so it's not there. And then that is positive with positive. So my answer would be between 0 and 45 and between 90 and 135. Right? Let's look at that. You can see there, there is that piece there. Okay. And because it's the asymptote, I have to exclude the asymptote value there. So I write the answer from 0 to 45 and from 90 to 135. Take note of the notation. Question 4 is adapted from 2018 paper. We're going to look at the detailed solution there. Again, here, write down the period of F. So I have to know that what's the default period for tangent. That's correct, 180. And now I've got 3 over 2, which is the same as 1,5. Do a little bit of arithmetic, and that's 120. Determine the general solution, right? So the X value, I'll make the X a T, and my output is 2, so my FX becomes 2. Let's get set up that equation like that. So it's negative 10, 2, 10, 1,5 T equal to 2. Transpose the negative 2, it becomes negative 1. I have to get the reference angle for 1, and the reference angle for 1 is 45. Don't use the negative 1. Where's tangent? Negative in the second quadrant. Because it's tangent, you don't have to look for the fourth quadrant because the, of the period 180. Now, I, I don't want 3 over 2 t. I divide by 3 over 2. 135 by, divided by 1,5 is 90. And 180 divided by 1,5 is 120. And don't forget to indicate t is an element of the integers. And there is my general solution. Now we have to draw that particular graph. Again, use your calculator. What would the steps be here? Right? Just take note of the steps, and if you draw that tangent graph, that is what you will get there. Okay? And we've drawn it from negative 120 to 180. Okay? You can see the default uh, um, asymptote is at 90. So I take 90 divided by 1,5, and 90 give me an asymptote at 60. So that, uh, this graph is correct. The asymptote is at 60. Let's look at uh, this question. There's our graph. We want to determine where is fx greater or equal to 2. So there's the y equal to 2, right, and greater. You see, that's the portion greater. 
So it's between the asymptote and that point, and that point is right in the middle. So it's between negative 60 and negative 30. And it's greater between the asymptote, which is 60, and that one is 90. So between, neg between 60 and 90, as indicated. Describe the transformation. So we can see there, that I still have a negative 2 and a negative 2. So there's no reflection. Here I only have, I've got an angle added. So what we have to do first, I need to get it into, take the 3 out over 2 as a common factor. To get the 3 over 2 there. And 60 divided by 3, uh, uh, 3, uh, uh, 3 over 2 gives me 40 degrees. Right? Therefore, now you can see what the transformation is. That plus tells me it was shifted to the left. So it was shifted 40 degrees to the left. Okay. I, I hope you followed these solutions carefully. And, you know, you can pause and stop. You don't have to uh, follow it uh, immediately. And maybe you try it. And, uh, you know, I try to follow the uh, solutions. Uh, and I try to make the most elegant uh, solutions. And try to, But there are also sometimes other ways in which you can obtain the same solution as well. Please, if you have any queries, you're welcome to uh, send me a comment. And most of all, don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so. Mats with Armin. Until next time.